Grade 11 IT Theory Module 1.2a Software Operating Systems Every computer needs to have an operating system. Without it, the computer is not going to work. You're probably familiar with Windows 7 or Windows 10, or if you have a MacBook, um, an Apple computer, you, then you use OS X, which is slightly different. But that is your operating system. It is actually system software. The other type of software is application software. It controls everything that goes on inside the computer. It is in charge of deciding which programs are using the CPU, which devices can access the CPU, and so on. And the operating system uses a GUI for you to GUI meaning graphical user interface. So you see pictures on the screen and you click on them and that's how you get things to work in the operating system. Here is a table of operating systems for computers. So for portable com for desktops or portable computers, we have Windows, Microsoft Windows, the most common. It is usually included with your computer when you buy a new computer, but if you had to buy it new, it would cost 2,500 to 4,300 Rand, depending on whether you're buying a home version or a pro version. OS X um, is included with Apple computers and it needs 7 gigs of um, hard drive space. Linux is actually a free um, operating system. Its size depends from anything from 5 gigabytes to 10 gigabytes. Then for mobile devices, you also need an operating system. This would be a tablet or a, or a smartphone. iOS comes on iPhones, iPods and iPads. Um, and Android is another operating system with a lot of different versions. It is included with all Android type devices, so you don't actually buy it separate. Windows Phone 10 is included with all Windows based smartphones. The Nokia Lumia is the best known of all of these. Um, and Blackberry OS 10 is made for Blackberry cell phones, smartphones, and tablets. So, what does an operating system actually do? The picture here shows, gives us a type of summary of what its functions are. Number one, it provides an interface. It allows you, the user, to see what's going on in your computer and to be able to give input into the computer. Number two, it manages the processes. It decides which programs, which processes are being used, are being run by the CPU at all times. It then manages memory. Remember, you've got a limited amount of memory in your computer or RAM, and the operating system decides which part of memory is used for by each program. It also manages input and output, and it manages the drives. Probably the most important is your hard drive, but if you've got flash drives or external drives plugged in, the operating system is managing those as well. Just a few definitions before we continue with, um, with other um, aspects of how the CPU works. A process is just a number of, just a few consecutive instructions which are executed by the CPU, whereas a program is a whole set of instructions which execute a, a specific task. So it would be more than a process. A process would fit within a program. And a program can be split into many parts, or the whole program could be one process. And then a thread. A thread is part of a bigger program which runs independently from other threads. So the different threads in a program run at the same time. We'll look at some examples of threads in a few slides time. How does, I will use OS as a, a abbreviation for operating system, 
How does the OS do so many tasks simultaneously? You could look like you're playing a movie on your screen and then you've got Chrome running or the Internet Explorer and you might have a Word document and they're all running at the same time. How does this happen? It uses a few special techniques, multitasking, multi-threading and multi-processing. With multitasking, it appears that your computer is running Chrome, Media Player, NetBeans, and a game maybe, all at the same time. But it's not actually doing this. It's splitting the CPU time between these four programs or applications. So the switching happens so quickly that you don't even notice it's happening. It looks like they're all running at the same time, but the CPU is very quickly doing a little few commands for Chrome, then a few commands for Media Player, then NetBeans, then Game, and so on. Um, if your CPU has a, few, has a number of cores, if it's a quad core or a type of CPU, then the operating system can divide the CPU time of each core between the multiple processes. So this is multitasking. We say that women are very good at multitasking, but they also can't do many things at the same time. They tend to do one, a little bit of the one, then a little bit of the other, and so on. So here is an example of exactly how multitasking would work. Um, you see the CPU dedicating 100 milliseconds to the operating system, then to the word processor, then the web browser. Of course, this is an idealistic way. It's not exactly the way it happens, but just to give you an idea. The next um, special technique that your CPU uses is multi-threading. This is when separate threads of a program run simultaneously. A very good example of a of a program that is split into threads is Outlook. One thread may take care of composing new emails. Another thread would be printing an email. Another thread is a calendar setting and another thread would be another new task. Or you could think of a, multi of a word processor. So while you're busy doing input on the screen, in the background, there's spell checking and grammar checking that's going on. And then you might be also printing something in the background. And every now and then, you'll notice that your Word document gets saved all by itself. And that's because there are these four threads running simultaneously um, on your CPU. And then the next special technique is called multiprocessing. And this is when many processes are used to run processes. So we do have many multi-core processes, dual cores, quad cores, and there's even the latest is a 72 core with the Intel Xeon Phi supercomputing chip. I mean, that's really not common, but you can see that with multi-core processing um, or multi-processing, it's as if you had, if you with a quad core, it's as if you had four CPUs in your computer all doing the work at once. So an example of multi-processing um, The CPU Core 1 would be doing the operating system and the word processor. Core 2 would be doing the web browser, MP3 player, and so on.